Hi, my name is Phil of Milton Photography in North Wales and today we're going to be looking at a zooming technique that's very handy for big lenses like this one which is the 150 to 600. Okay, in the course of this video we're going to break down three things. We're going to have a look at the technique That'll be the first point. Second point, we're going to go why you would use this and what circumstances they can help you in. And the third one is looking at how we can spot which lenses this technique can be used for. So the technique in question is one called tromboning. Yeah, I know. But once you see it, you'll understand why. Now, Traditionally, on lenses of this type, you would use what's called the focal length collar or the zoom collar. Well, as we can see, that's getting a bit long, so what we can do instead is just actually use a push and a pull method. And that is, in essence, tromboning allows us to change our focal length a lot more effectively and a lot faster. So that's the technique, it's just literally pushing and pulling. There we go, nice and simple. Well, now that we've seen the technique, why would we use it? Well, I've already pointed out it's a lot more faster than trying to do it with a zoom collar to change our focal length. That's being the biggest one. The other thing is it can allow us to do very small adjustments. So at the moment I'm rocking between 180 and 250 on this lens. I can even rotate it so that I can give you a little bit of a view. So I'm just pulling that backwards and forwards. But what it allows me to do is, instead of looking up here to try and gauge what my focal length should be, I'm just seeing what it is through the lens and making adjustments on the fly. So, why is that handy? Well, if we're trying to lock in on a subject, we could just leave the lens out all the time at 600mm, I can crank this, leave it at 600mm, look around, find my subjects, and boom, boom, boom. But it can be quite haphazard when you're starting off. You'll find that you end up looking far over to the right or far over to the left, when in reality all you needed to do was maybe change the lens position from there to there. So you're not really using a huge amount of movement because you've got so much more focal length. So that's one of its big advantages. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little video right now off of the camera so that you can see what I'm looking for. So I'm going to zoom this back. What we have is some herring gulls. We also have some swans in our distance as well. So what this will allow me to do is lock onto one bird, then lock onto another bird. So I just need one of those seagulls to sit still and we should be away. So remember our intermediate tripod from the beginning? Well, right investment allows you to, choose, to use even very heavy equipment at a later date using it. So I've already put some friction on. Now I'm gonna release it. Go. Got a little bit of movement. Let's hit record. There's my herring goal. Zoom in on that one. Okay, and that would be click, 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 click. Got my photo. Right, now I want the swans over to the left. Coming out. There we go. And 
Oh, there's a nice one having a little nap. And zooming in, click, 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 click. So it takes out some of the guesswork. I now try and do that using the zoom collar. What's going to happen is the footage is going to start getting a little bit shaky. So where's that seagull gone? Ah, there it is. So not as smooth. Coming back. And I think that one's our swan. Yep. And there we go. So nowhere near as smooth motion. Just looking through that little bit of footage there. Now, if I was freehanding it, what's going to happen is the weight's going to start pulling me at the front, whereas if I'm supporting it handheld, and I do use this lens handheld, uh, we've seen that on a previous video, it just allows me a lot more support and it allows me a lot more accuracy because if I'm trying to pull it back here, the lens is going to start dipping and that's when we start losing track of our subject. So I think what we might do is just do a quick little bit of footage freehand and you'll get an idea of that. So I've got a swan over there, I've got some little seabirds, and then I've got another swan over there. So if you watch what happens, bang record, slide that out, there we go. So, starting off with a swan over there. So I'm allowed to, able to keep hold of that a lot better. Coming back, oh there's a nice seagull. So it's even allowing me to stay nice and smooth whilst in flight. And then I'm going to come back, see if I can spot our swan from before. There it is. Okay. So. Let's try that with the zoom collar. So we started off over here. So, yep, sorry if you're starting to feel a bit seasick, but you're now starting to see where it's going a little bit ropey. Let's come back out. Okay, there's, there we go, that was the seagull that was coming in back out so as you can see there was a big lift up into the air there's our favorite swan as you can see it's just not nearly as smooth and as user friendly as using that with the push and the pull which is its other name, push pull method. Okay, so that is. Oh, better stop that. So that is tromboning and the reasons why we do it. Its speed, its smoothness, it allows us to adjust on the fly. It's just a great way of supporting the lens as well. So I think what we need to do now have a look at some of the attributes of this lens and then we'll compare it to a lens that it is not suitable for. What we're looking at here with the 150 to 600 Sigma and this is continued in with their contemporary and you'll also find 100 to 400s will also have either this collar or they'll have it built into the hood. Easy example of that is the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II is a ridge. This ridge here allows for you to get hold of, to grip, to support. In this instance it's rubberized so it's even easier for me in different in difficult types of situation that I can just grab hold of it, pull it out. It's a very nice little feature but it supports the forward push of the hand to get the movement going. So. Now, I've had my lens now since 2015, so that moves quite smoothly. 
when you start off with them and you're not sure about it just take your time it will ease in time and you'll just come to appreciate what a good method the tromboning or push-pull method works for you so the other aspect of this lens is that it does all of its focusing inside here so that when the lens is extending the hood does not rotate so let's show you a lens where that that wouldn't work so here's a lens that proves all photographers are hoarders this is the first lens that i got with my canon film slr it's well over 20 years old still functions funnily enough and it was designed as a budget no way around it that's what it is it's a budget lens it's a budget option and it's very reminiscent of the 18 to 55s that you get with most entry-level slrs or mirrorless systems so if we just have a quick look at it if i zoom it back to 28 millimeters and then zoom it back to 90 you'll notice that it dips so that's going to be problematic because as i try and change from 28 to say 50 it's not going to let me if i put it at 50 it locks itself in because that's where the curve of it is and if i go from 90 and push it down i can't pull it up the other thing and this is more reminiscent of the 70 to 300 type lenses is that when it focuses it rotates the front element so I'm holding the body still, as you can see the names are rotating. So with this one, when I was zooming, I was also focusing at the same time. Your downside to that with a lens like this means that if you were to try and trombone, you'd then be fighting the focusing mechanism and you'd break the gears inside that lens. Uh, definitely not something you want to do Let's see if I can balance that there for a minute that's being awkward so if you're using a big lens do have a look see if you can find a ridge along it could be on the hood which is that the bit that you attach or alternatively it could be just made into the barrel try using this technique that my lens is a fair few years old so it is now very smooth to move when I first got it it was a very stiff so do take your time getting used to this technique but you will find that it just speeds up your workflow and it'll just help you with your composition and finding subjects in the distance all right this is one of my first videos where I'm trying to do techniques tell me how I went how I did is it a nice uh, a nice format that I've chosen just where I'm showing you the technique explaining when you'd use it and explaining how to find out whether your equipment is up to the task or whether it's something that you'd be looking for in the future uh, any questions any comments please do leave them below I do appreciate feedback it did lead to me doing this type of video so uh, you guys do get in touch and stay safe and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.